Log normal distributions are continuous, unbound, and right skewed, and extend several orders of magnitude. They are restricted to values greater than zero. The natural log of the log normal distribution is normal, as we can see in the upper figure. Additionally, log normal distributions are commonly observed in nature, for example, oil field sizes, the length of forests, or raindrop sizes. Oil and gas production from the Niobrara and Codell formations illustrate this point. Note how the x-axis are in log scale. A fitted log normal distribution is desirable because it can easily be transformed to normal, which allows more robust probability evaluations, for example, normality tests like the chi-squared. Reporting standard deviation of a log normal distribution is ambiguous because standard deviations don't have the same magnitude on either side of the mean as illustrated in the upper figure. The interquartile range is a better measure of the data distribution for the log normal distribution, as we will see in the following slides and in the live Excel demonstration. One interesting observation about a log normal distribution is that the product of multiple randomly sampled distributions tend to produce a log normal distribution. For example, a uniform distribution times a uniform distribution times a uniform distribution yields a log normal distribution. In science, we see this in probabilistic evaluations that have multiple attributes and each attribute having its own distribution. For example, in oil field size estimation, multiple distributions are multiplied together, such as porosity, thickness, and oil saturation. The following two slides demonstrate how to fit the log normal distribution to raw data and how to build one where only the distribution minimum, most likely, and maximum values are known. Two input parameters, the mean, or mu, and standard deviation sigma, are needed to fit a log normal distribution in Excel. But it's important to note that mu and sigma are not the arithmetic mean or standard deviation of the raw data, as I will show below. Excel has two log normal functions, log norm env and log norm dist where probability is a random value generated by Excel's RAND function, and the mean, mu, and standard dev, sigma, are represented by the intercept and slope of the scatter plot of z-score versus the natural log of the values, respectively. A cumulative of true in log norm dist provides the cumulative probability, and false provides the mass density output. As I had mentioned, the arithmetic mean and standard deviation of the raw data do not satisfy Excel's log normal function, and that's why I prefer to use the terms mu and sigma for Excel's log norm parameters. Let's discuss three methods for determining mu and sigma. First is the scatter plot method, figured in the upper right, that displays the top US 100 oil fields, where the z-score and natural log of the field size are plotted with a linear trend line. The intercept and slope of the linear trend line are mu and sigma respectively. The second method is the three-point method where mu and sigma are derived from formulas. Third is the LSS method, an alternative formula method that incorporates location, scale, and shape. The lower left figure shows three log normal distributions derived from the raw oil field size data. The blue dots are binned frequencies. In red is the scatter plot, orange represents the three-point method, and green is the LSS method. For comparison, a beta distribution is shown in black with a dispersion factor lambda of 12. Given that the data span four orders of magnitude, the PDFs are very similar. In the next slide, we'll see just how similar they are. As we saw in the previous slide, there are three methods for calculating mu and sigma, namely the scatter plot, three point, and LSS methods. In this slide, charts and descriptive statistics show that the three methods give practically, quote unquote, the same results. That is, in practical terms, we cannot say these methods produce different results in a significant way particularly given that these data span four orders of magnitude from the hundreds to the hundreds of thousands. Visual inspection of the box and whisker plot in the upper left show that the interquartile range and P95 and P05 values 
are practically identical, as are the cumulative probability distributions shown in the lower left. Examination of the descriptive statistics table are similar, given the broad range of the data. Let's look at a few rows of the table. Interquartile range, these values are close. The P05 values are practically the same, and the mode values are also similar. The main difference in the table comes from the max values, especially the beta values. But consider that these max values are transient, that is, they vary from simulation to simulation. Moreover, the outliers shown in the box and whisker plot represent about 5% of the 5,000 trials evaluated. In summary, all three methods for determining mu and sigma are adequate. Now, let's move on to a live demonstration of the Excel worksheet. First, let's take a tour of what's in this worksheet. On the left here, we have our charts. We have some notes and descriptions of the methods we use. We have some statistics of the raw data and of our model results. Here's a histogram of our raw data. This is the uh, U.S. oil field data that we've looked at in the PowerPoint slides. And here is where we do the calculations for our PDFs. Here is where we calculate the beta distribution that we use in the comparison. And here is the raw data. Now, let's take a closer look at the elements in this worksheet. We'll scroll back over to the left. And first, we'll look at the scatter plot, which I covered in the PowerPoint presentation. And here is the mu and sigma that we captured from the trend line data, looking at the slope and the intercept. If we click on the cells, we can see that here I've used the intercept formula. And here I've used the slope formula to calculate these parameters. And I've done this from the data that's in the, the raw data. Similarly, I've done the three-point method. And here I'm looking at the formula, calculating using the mean and the median in the raw statistics. And the same thing here for sigma. Again, looking at the raw data, mean and median. And finally, when we look at the LSS method, we're looking at 060 and 061, which are calculated down here in this table. All right, let's take a look at these other charts in more detail. So on the PDFs, the red is the log normal. The orange line is the three-point method. The green line is the LSS method, and the black is our beta distribution. Now, the interesting thing about this beta, right now, with a lambda of 12, it goes out to about 50,000, which we can see here in our statistics. But if we change this to, say, 24, return shift F9, we recalculate the beta curve. We can see it looks very similar to the shape of the scatter plot method. We'll return this to 12. And let's take a closer look at the box and whisker plots. The box and whisker plots look very similar. As we can see here, the interquartile ranges are about the same. The maxes and the mins are about the same. But we can see some variation in the amount of outliers. These change with every simulation. Let's run a couple of simulations by hitting Shift F9 and watch these. So you can see that they move around a bit with each simulation. The thing I found interesting is, is that when you have these types of outliers, this max is really more like a P05. And finally, when we look at the cumulative probability distributions from these different methods, they all look quite similar. Let's move on and look at how we calculate these curves. And we'll use these means and standard deviations, or mu and sigmas, in our calculations for 
the PDFs, and the cumulative distributions. First, let's look at the three-point method. So if I click on the first cell, we take a RAND value for X, and, and here is the mu and sigma from our table that we looked at a moment ago. That's how we do the log env. When we go over here to the log dist, which is going to be the density or the mass density, we say false because we don't want it to be cumulative. We're using the value that we just calculated in X5 and, again, mu or sigma. And we do the same thing with these other two methods. Moving over to the right is the beta distribution, where we take the, the mean, we take the mode calculation from cell O20. And so if we look for that cell, we're taking it from the scatter plot technique right here. So that's where we get the, the most likely and the max we take from the log normal env function. And we put in our la lambda 12 comes from that yellow box over on the left hand side of the worksheet. And we calculate alpha and beta. And then we run our beta distribution similar to how we did in our previous Excel demonstration. If you want to do these kinds of analysis in Excel, I highly recommend that you download the Excel worksheet. I'll leave a link in the video description for this. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.